Hey guys, Leo with Dreaming Tree and welcome to the assembly video for our winter explosion box. I have all my pieces cut out, as should you, and we're going to begin by putting together um, some of the separate little individual elements and then we'll tie it all together by assembling the actual box itself. So I figured we'd just start by putting together the little house. Okay, and you'll notice here that we have some panels. And the reason that we made the panels was mostly to just make sure that we don't see any tabs when we illuminate the actual structure, okay? So you'll notice this is the first video where I have a, well, a higher quality overhead camera. So hopefully uh, you see the difference. It should be a lot more clear, okay? All right, so we're gonna start off here by just gluing this gold, I'm sorry, this is a silver foil on top of the little door on this panel here. And this door is gonna swing open when we actually get it in place. We're gonna leave it open just a tad so that it's nice and warm and inviting to whoever may wander by. Just make sure that you get that lined up as accurately as possible. Okay, and then we have all these windows are the same size. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one you grab. There's two square windows on the front, two on the back, and two on each side. You just wanna put little dots of glue on this piece. You don't need a lot. And just match it up with the little cross section on the panel. Press that down into place. It's gonna look really nice. Once everything is said and done. And don't cake this with too much glue. No need for that. There we go. And we have some vellum that we'll be incorporating as well to diffuse our light. So when your recipient opens up the box. Two sides will open up to reveal a little note, possibly a gift card, and of course, the beautiful little house. Now, it's made for an electronic tea light. Um, I don't recommend leaving it on unless you're gonna hand deliver it and you want them to be really surprised. You can turn it on before you come in and hand it to them and ask them to open it uh, but if you're mailing it, obviously, you'll leave the tea light off. And so when they receive their gift, they'll also have a beautiful little keepsake that they can display. And they'll be raving about it, I'm sure. Okay, I'll just keep on cruising here. And I would do that if... I wasn't dropping things. This camera above me got a higher quality lens and a higher quality body, which means that I'm going to need to start visiting the nail salon more often. Because you guys are going to see every little detail here. It looks nice and big and crisp on my little preview screen here. So I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. And the autofocus on this camera is wonderful. So when I start to, if I ever need to bring things up closer, get a closer shot on things. Let me show you an example here. I can go like this. And it should focus in on that, just like that. So hopefully this will make your dreaming tree experience even better for 2024. I don't think this will be our last project for 2024, but, or 2023, I should say. <laughs> Boy, if this was our last project for 2024, I'd have a, I'd have a pretty prolonged vacation there, I think. Anyway, we've been had, uh, I went down to Tennessee for a football tournament during Thanksgiving. I'll never do that again. 
I went to Gatlinburg, and that is a tourist trap. It's beautiful. Uh, I will say I've never been, never been so terrified driving around. You cannot go straight there. You literally can't go straight for more than two seconds. It's, everything is a twist and turn. And at any given moment, you feel like you can end up in a ditch. Uh, I'm sure the people get accustomed to it, but I, I don't know. Um, it really made me miss the flat land of the Midwest. <laughs> was not a fan. Okay, so just try to make sure you get that lined up as accurately as possible. All right, so those panels are, those little overlays are done. Now let's grab the main structure here, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna glue down the vellum. Uh, these rectangular ones are gonna go right here. And then there's two that are very similar in size. This one's gonna go here for the three windows and this one's a little bit bigger, it looks like home plate. This one's gonna go down here and we're gonna get that flush so that it also covers the door. Okay, so we can start here by just applying some glue around the windows and maybe a little bit by the door. And I would take this tab and flip it up a little bit so you can take this piece of vellum and push it up against the little tab there so you know where to stop it. And just hold that in place for just a moment. And then we'll continue on here. It's a tiny little house, obviously, because you're not going to try to put any put a mansion inside of a little box. I suppose you could try, but we're just keeping it simple. And I don't even need to pick out that many colors for the house. It's mostly white, and it's got a little bit of that that silver foil just to make it super wintry. Okay, and if it's not sitting completely flat, it's not a big deal. No one's really gonna look inside of this thing anyway. So it's not a huge deal. Okay, we'll pop that into place like that. Okay, now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna build this thing. I'm gonna close it up on this side here first so we can actually do that flat. Let's flatten these tabs out. And you can see, since it's, it's a symmetrical piece, you should be able to lay it down flat. I'm gonna apply glue to this little tab here. I'm gonna take that glue and spread it out to the very edge of the tab. I'm gonna pop that down, grab the other side, press it into place, and you really can't mess that up since everything is already anchored in place. Okay, so there we go. And we'll take these tabs and fold them in. Now we're gonna glue this side of the roof down first. Okay, so let's move this out of the way temporarily and let's apply our glue to these two tabs. Go nice and easy. Get enough on there where you can spread it out to the edge. We're gonna be putting a roof on this um, that will kind of go past this glue point or this tab. So even if it's not completely flush, it's gonna be okay, it'll be hidden, but you still wanna do the best you can. Okay. There we go. And then we can move this out of the way temporarily and we'll apply glue to these three tabs and then we'll close it up. Okay, and I literally have not crafted for probably about two weeks or so. So I'm a little, a little, a little rough right now. Gotta get back into the swing. Okay, we'll go ahead and close this up. Pop it into place as accurately as you can. Make sure everything's nice and lined up. There we go. And then what you can also do too Let's put this down on the side. You can press down from the inside to get the rest of those tabs to make better contact. There we go. 
And over the last few days, we just hit 59,000 YouTube subscribers. So thank you to each and every one of you. All right, now I'm going to take and close up the bottom, make this thing nice and sturdy. Let's apply our glue to these three tabs. And then we'll start applying some panels. There we go. Spread that out. And the reason there's a, a hole in the bottom is obviously the tea light needs to go in there somehow. And it's just big enough for a standard little electronic tea light. You obviously don't want to, uh, you don't want to put a real candle in here unless you're trying to send a specific message to somebody that, you know, but even then, I think there's better ways to handle situations where maybe somebody did you wrong. <laughs> I'm not insinuating anything by any means. Okay, there we go. We've got a cute little house. All right, I'm going to put our panels on first. Um, so let's put the sides on first. You can see how they're going to go just like that. Should fit perfectly. We'll flip this over, apply our glue. Go nice and easy. Try to make sure you get coverage on as much of that surface as you can. Line it up with the existing windows there. Make sure it's nice and centered. Should be flush with the bottom, flush with the front, flush with the back. And press that down. You can also put that down on your surface, push down from the inside. There we go. That looks good. Now we'll flip her over, grab the other one. And it's going to go right there like so. Okay. And I'm not really, I'm not doing any inking on this white because I really want to keep it nice and snowy and pure. I thought about it. I may or may not do a little bit of turquoise or like, a, I, have a, I have a certain blue that I've been using instead of turquoise lately. I might do that for the roof. Uh, it's this color here, teal zeal. It's a turquoisey color. Okay, there's that. All right, now we can put the back on. Same process. And like I mentioned, uh, because there are tabs inside this house, when you put a little tea light in there, Sometimes that tea light can be strong enough to where, you know, it kind of penetrates through that white and then you see the shadow of the, um, of the tab and it makes it look kind of weird. So we wanted to add an extra panel just to make sure that the light stays inside behind the white section and only penetrates through the vellum cutouts. Okay. There's our back and now to the front. Do not, make sure you do not put glue on the door. Because again, we want to keep that open. And I don't know if you can tell, but I, this probably happened last year. Uh, the baby had, baby had some sinus thing going on and dad to the rescue with that little tube thing to help clear his sinuses and of course I ingested it into my respiratory system. Took one for the team and it just hit me. Got it real deep in there so whatever it is it's not fun but it's the sacrifices you make and I just found out that there's actually a machine that does that so I'm going to invest in one of those <laughs> so I don't have to deal with that again. Okay, there we go. All right, so you can see here, the door is going to stay open. And now one other thing too, uh, is the way that we're going to keep this anchored inside of our, our shadow box is using a series of Velcro dots. Okay, so I'm actually going to cut them out now and just get them in place. Um, you can use three, you can use four, whatever. Um, you could technically, you know what, there is a little, um, uh, there's going to be a little, uh, well, I'll show you. There's going to be a little lip in there that kind of keeps the candle in place, which will technically sort of keep this thing 
for moving around too much as well, but just to really make sure it doesn't move, uh, we're just gonna use some Velcro. We're gonna put Velcro on the four corners here. Okay, you can do that now, you can do that later. I figure I just get it out of the way. I'll at least just do one part of it and leave the other backing on there so I don't accidentally glue this to my table. And I'll show you how that all works. As we get to that point, there we go. And like I said, you may be able to get away with just like maybe two in the front, one in the back. Yeah, for good measure, I'm just going to go all the way and just do is it's acting kind of funky. Okay. And one more. Then we just have to put the roof on. And we can start working on some other elements. It's a pretty straightforward little box. Okay. All right, so I've got them on there. I didn't take the other backings off. We'll leave those on for now. And then we have the actual roof itself. Now you'll notice that there are some little cutouts here. And what you can do is you can take and just kind of curl them, pull them towards you, just push out from the inside and curl them out like this. And that's just to kind of give the impression of little shingles there. Makes it, give it, it gives it a little interest, a little dimension. Okay, just pop those out. Grab the tip and just kind of curl it up. You can you can have them come out straight. I prefer to give them a little bit of a curl. Okay, so that's gonna go on like this. And we wanna make sure that we have a little bit of it hanging over on the front and the back. Okay. And if you want, since you're really not gonna see the back, you can kind of have it uh, curve up or curve out a little more um, in the front, if you want that to kind of stick out a little bit more. And I realize that we have those little shingle cutouts, but I'm not going to worry about trying to avoid those areas where the shingles pop out because it is just going to, it's going to dry clear anyway. There we go. Press and hold that down. Try not to bend the tips of the roof or the ends. I've seen some projects where we're putting roofs on and the very edge, the very end gets kind of, uh, you know, just warped. So I don't want to do that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And I'm noticing here on one of my side panels that it's kind of not sitting completely flat. So I'm just gonna grab a scrap piece of paper and throw a little glue on there. And then just tuck a little bit of glue into that little area in between that section and just press and hold that down so it's nice and flat. That'll do it. Okay. All right, so our house is almost done. Uh, we do have a pretty little wreath that we're gonna put on there. And I have one more little section that I need to ink and that is the wreath itself. There's uh, it's pretty tiny, so you may not notice it, but I notice every little thing. So I would definitely want to hit that with a little bit of ink, give it some added interest and in color. Okay, so since this is a like a darker green, I'm going with a green that's even darker than that as far as the color so all right so now this we've got two different bows here this one with the cutouts is going to go on top of the one without the cutouts we we'll just take and apply a few little dots of glue onto that top section just line it up with the bottom section like so and hopefully this thing's not moving the focus around too much. Uh, we'll see what kind of feedback I get on this camera and whether or not we're going to keep it. 
So you can always go back to the old one, but I think we're going to be okay. All right, once we have that, we're going to take this, take the little tails, line them up, make sure they're nice and centered. There we go. And that's just going to go right on top of our little wreath. Just take the, the round part of the center, match it up with one of the little scallop tops of the scalloped sections of the actual wreath. That doesn't need to be dimensional. And actually, you know what? Uh, looks like maybe there's a couple scallops that are a little bit bigger than the others. Maybe try to find one of those. There we go. Okay, and then you can use a foam square if you want to give that a little dimension. I think I'm going to do that. I just bought a new set of foam squares. Now, the ones I have, these are black. So I'm actually not going to use those. I'm going to use the white ones so that they blend better in case you do happen to catch one from the side. And you can always take and cut them with a pair of scissors. Since they may be a little bit too big. And it's going to go right over that little door, or that window, I should say. And these are the ones where the backing is kind of a pain sometimes. It's going to go right there, just like that. Okay. All right. So our little house is pretty much done. I'm going to put that off to the side for now. And we can take and begin sort of putting together some of the other things. Um, you know what? Let's, let's put the lid together. This is the main part of our lid. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply glue to these little tabs here and get them connected. Okay, spread that out to the edge, bring that in, line it up like so, and press and hold. You can also put that down on your surface, speed things up a little bit, and then go over to the next one, and just repeat this process until we have all four of these in place. There we go. Now it's important just to make sure that your lid stays nice and square, that you pre-fold all of the little tabs and all the score lines for all the sides. There we go. One more to go. Now this one, you might need to just kind of pop your glue bottle inside a little bit rather than pulling it out and risking ripping it apart. And sometimes it's just easier to use a scrap piece of paper to paint that glue out to the edge. Okay. And line that up. And press and hold. There we go. Okay. Next, I'm going to grab this little piece here. And you can see that I, I did ink this. And I just found a, a shade, a tone that was a, just a shade darker than the actual color. And that looks really nice. So. Um, what I think we should do here, just to make sure that we get it in place correctly, is probably glue it to two sides first, like this. OK. 
Okay, so I'm actually going to take and I'm going to apply glue. Well, you know what? That's probably not a good idea. Let's do the center. We'll just use the little sides to ensure that we have it in the correct spot. So just kind of fold these down, drop it into place, and just make sure that these all match up like so. Okay, just like that. That looks pretty straight. So we'll fold, flip that over, press that down. Boy, sinus congestion really messes with your head. <laughs> I might need to do, if you guys have ever done a neti pot, not, not the most fun thing in the world, but can definitely be helpful. Okay, so then we'll just take the remaining four little pieces like this. Make sure you get some glue out to the very edge, fold it over and press it down. Make sure it's nice and straight and should be aligned with the bottom of the lip of the, the lid, just like that. Bring that over. Okay. Same thing there. Okay, this is the one that I started to put glue on. I don't know what I was thinking. Got a little sinus brain fog. Oh, I got an email from a customer a couple weeks back, probably before Thanksgiving saying that they were not a big fan of the the green color uh here you know what and the more i thought about it i actually agreed with her i just happened to get that one because I, I felt like i needed a new one because that one was looking kind of gross and uh i try that gooby gone stuff and all the ink just gets in there and it just needs to be replaced every now and then so i ended up just getting a, ne a neutral gray one um, similar to what I've had in the past. Okay, so that piece is in place now, and that looks wonderful. Now we do have a little bow, okay, that's gonna go on here. And first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna need this piece here. And you wanna grab yourself a little dowel, and we're gonna take and place your finger in the dowel, or the, the little bow, this piece, the tail, I guess you could say, between your finger and the dowel. Take that and lift this up about 90 degrees and run the dowel through just to kind of lift it. And then you can do the same thing with each of these little tails here as well. Okay, just like that. It gives it a nice added dimension. This part's gonna go in the center once all said and done. All right, so with this, this is the side that I want visible, okay? This is the side that I inked, but to put it together, we're gonna to actually flip it upside down and I'm gonna apply glue to one of these sections here. And what we're gonna do is just take and glue these two little rectangles or yeah, they're rectangles, they're not perfect squares. Just glue one on top of the other. It's a different style bow. Let's pop that right into place, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kinda of alternate sides here okay so first if you want what you can do is take and kind of give that a little bit of a, a natural curve with the dowel okay so i'm placing the paper between my finger and the dowel lifting it up about 90 degrees and running the dowel through okay so here's what we're going to do now we're going to take and apply glue just to the bottom of this little rectangle part that's connected to uh, this little loop here, okay? I'm gonna take that and bring it in and just glue it down to half, half of that rectangle, the half that's closest to the actual loop and press and hold that down. Okay, just keep holding it like so. And then we're gonna go over to, we're gonna go not to this one, but to this one over here. We'll do the same thing. Just apply your glue to that little rectangle, bring it in and connect it to the other half. And just press and hold. Okay. Just like that. 
And then we can go over here and apply our glue to this little rectangle. Bring that in, glue that down to the half closest to this loop and press and hold. And just keep holding that. It's gonna be a little bit of resistance and that's expected. Okay, and then we'll take and apply glue to the last section. And glue that down to the other half of that little rectangle. Just like that. You can lift it up if it helps. Okay. And fold that up a little bit. And then what we'll do is we're going to take this piece and just kind of wrap it around the center. There's no, there's no score marks. You can just fold it however. You can leave a little bit of room there if you want just to make it look a little more dimensional. And apply a little bit of glue just like that. And press and hold for just a moment. There we go. And it's going to sit like that. Okay. And then we're going to glue that down like this. Okay, so just apply a little bit of glue on the back of this section. And then you want to center that right onto this little guy here. Make sure that you have equal amounts of that tail coming out on both ends. And just press that down. Make sure it's tucked away back there evenly. There we go. And just press that into place. And then finally, you can take and glue that onto the top of your lid. You have a beautiful lid with a bow. Um, hot glue might be a good idea here. Since we do have a lot of resistance happening, might just be a good idea. Make sure you get that nice and centered on your box. You don't need it, but it wouldn't hurt. There we go. Okay. Next, we're going to start assembling the actual um, well, the container of the box. Okay, and what we're gonna do here, this piece here, this is gonna make up the part that contains the two sections that do not fall to the side when you open it up, okay? These are always going to be erect. All right, so what we need to do here is we need to glue this little tab down to this structure here. So let's do that. Get your glue going. And we're going to take and spread that glue out so everything looks nice and crisp. There we go. And just line that up as accurately as you can. And then press that down to the inside. Okay. There we go. Good. Okay, now before we do anything else, while we have it like that, let's take, these are the two decorative pieces that are actually gonna create the little background for our scene here. Okay, and that's gonna get glued in like this. And these little trees are gonna be a nice little overlay to add some dimension to this. Now you'll notice that it's cut off here, but it's not cut off here. This side is gonna get glued to the bottom left of this panel. 
Okay, so go ahead and apply your glue to the back of these trees. Just like that. And we went with a beautiful glitter. And I did hit it with a tiny little bit of ink right along the edges. I started to come in onto uh, the surface a little bit, and I didn't really like that. Almost, almost could say that you probably don't even need to ink that if you're adding or using the glitter on this. But that looks beautiful. That's an awesome little contrast there. Okay, so we've got that. Now, these trees that are kind of hanging off to the left, they're going to get glued onto this section here. And we do want to get that centered so there's an even border all the way around. So let's do that. Let's apply our glue. Like that. And pop that right in there. I wanted to put this together partially so that we understand the orientation of everything. Okay, press that down, make sure it's nice and even, nice and straight. There we go. Okay, and then on the other side, you can see how it's cut off here. This is going to go bottom right. So let's take and apply our glue there. Onto the back of our little trees here. Okay. And like I said, get that aligned bottom right. Make sure it's nice and flush with the bottom. Nice and flush with the right hand side. And press that down. Just like that. Okay, we'll flip this over, apply our glue to the back. And pop that into place. That's going to go right on this side. And again, try to make sure you keep an even border. And also, take a look at the height or where the top of the left section starts and try to make sure that these lines line up as well. There we go. Okay, so there's our beautiful little background scene. This paper's perfect. Looks like there's little snowflakes falling. Love it. Okay, next we're gonna take these two pieces here, which are the two sides that do come down, and we're gonna get them glued onto this surface here. Okay, so we're just gluing them in like this. So go ahead and, it doesn't matter which one you grab, they're both the same. Grab your glue, apply it. And there we go. And I'm just going to do it from this angle here, just so I can make sure that everything is lined up accurately, at least initially. There we go. I can put that down on my surface and press down on that tab. Take another look, and that looks great. Get it all the way down to that little corner there. Make sure that, there we go. Okay, then we'll do the same thing with this side. All right. And when done correctly, all these tabs should pretty much meet up and butt up against each other on the inside there. Let's take a look. And that looks good. Okay, press that down. Okay, so we have essentially, it's going to go like this. I'm going to close that up like that. And then when you open it up, the two sides will open up to reveal the beautiful little house there. Okay. All right. So that's good. 
And next, what we're going to do, you're going to find this little piece here, okay, and this piece should have a little L on it, L for liner. And let's just make sure that everything closes up properly. And that's going to go right in there like that. Okay, so go ahead and flip that over. Apply your glue. And I'm just going to slide that right in. I'm going to take the side with a little L on it and put it in the back corner so no one sees it. And I'm going to push it in as far as it'll go. I'm going to take a look and just make sure that it is centered. And press that down. Give us a beautiful little base. Make sure that both of these sides still go back in. And they do. Okay, next. Now you can, um, you can kind of decide which side you want to put uh, these elements on. I've got a little bit of this little liner that just is not sitting completely flat right there. So I'm just going to add a little extra glue to it, get it nice and flat. Okay. All right. So what I mean by that is we have elements for a gift card, which are these two. And you can see there's little slits here. You can kind of lift those up a little bit. Okay, and your little gift card will go there. And then we have this little pocket. It's going to go here, or you can flip flop them, whichever way you want to do it. Totally up to you. Okay, but let's take this little piece here with the slits for the gift card and let's apply our glue. Try not to get any glue on the actual little, little slit parts. We don't want them to get glued down because otherwise they won't work. Okay, get that nice and centered on this piece. Here we go. Just like that. And we can flip that over. And let's apply our glue. And want that nice and centered on this section here. Maintain a nice even border all the way around. Everything's nice. Nice, nice, nice. There we go. Okay. And that also thickens it up a little bit, makes that extra sturdy. All right, now for this part here, um, it doesn't, I don't think it really matters. I'm gonna go, this is the little note card that we included um, that you can write on, stamp on, you can have your machine write on it, whatever you wanna do. Okay, so we're gonna take and apply some glue to this tab here. And just run that glue all the way. Spread that glue out to the very edge. Grab this piece, bring it over right on top of that tab. Make sure it's nice and lined up. And press that down. Okay. And then I'm going to take this other section here and I'm just going to glue that down flat like that. And you know what? I'm going to actually, I should have done that before I glued it down, but it's okay. I can still work with it. I need to hit this with a little bit of ink just to keep everything consistent. this out so I don't get ink all over the surface behind it. That's nice. Okay. All right. So we'll close this up like so. And for this, 
I'm just going to take and apply mostly just some glue towards the base of this. We don't want to put glue on the whole thing because if we put glue here, you won't be able to slide your card in. Okay, so just keep it on the very bottom of that section. Press that down like so. And you can see here our little note card will go in there nicely, leaving a beautiful even border on there as well. And then we have some overlays for this. I have one here. So this little piece here is going to get glued down like a little puzzle. Uh, actually, you know what I forgot to do? I need to put glue. I'm just going to use a scrap piece here. I do need to put glue on this section. Totally spaced out. Okay. And just hold that in place for a second. So this little piece is going to go on here like a little puzzle. I'm going to pop it in there like that. And you'll have an even border all the way around like so. So go ahead and apply your glue. Try to get some in those little scalped areas. Like that. There we go. And then this guy here. And that's going to get centered on the other side. Try to maintain an even border around those little scalloped areas as well as the perimeter. There we go. Okay. And we've included this little piece here. Um, there's actually this season's greetings print and cut is also available in your extras folder so you can make it exactly how we have it here. Otherwise, just use the blank one and print whatever you want on it or stamp whatever you want on it if you have a stamp that fits. Or you can write your little message on there, whatever you want to do. It's a pretty versatile little box. So, you know, it could be a, a winter birthday, uh, a winter baby. It can be a graduate, or not a graduation, an anniversary, whatever, whatever it may be. Okay, and then we're going to glue this down here and I think I want the caption facing out so you can read it like that. Okay, so we'll just throw a little bit of glue, uh, probably just put some right here so we know exactly where it's going. And just pop that right in place, make sure it's nice and centered. Press that down like so. And we'll flip this over we're going to glue this whole thing down onto the other side of the box that flips down when you take the lid off. Okay. Again, make sure you have an, have an even border all the way around. Press that down. Okay, so Next thing we're going to do is build the base for the house. And that's this little guy here. Okay. And what we want to do, I want the glitter to be facing out and we have this uh, white area inside, but that's okay because we have a little panel that's going to go in there to continue the glittery effect. So now I'm putting some glue on this tab here. Now I'm putting glue on glitter which may, you may know, sometimes can be challenging to glue glitter to any um, surface. Many of you have used clothes pins to kind of keep it um, 
well, just to hold it in place while it dries. Now this might actually go pretty quick just because I'm gluing glitter to a non-glitter surface. So we might be okay as far as that goes. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be okay. Thank goodness, because that sometimes drives me nuts. Okay, so we'll go over here and apply glue to the next little tab. These tabs are sort of odd shaped because they need to match up with the shape of a little snow drift on the, on the front here. Let's just hold that down for just a moment. Make sure it's lined up nicely. There we go. Moving right along. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of what surfaces don't gel with other surfaces. And I guess glitter on non-glitter is usually okay. It's just the glitter on glitter that sometimes drives you nuts. Okay, so how are you guys liking the new overhead shot? To me, it looks super crisp. And we'll, uh, we'll see what the feedback is. I have a feeling it's going to be positive. All right, so the last tab there. Get that in place. And yeah, I could definitely, I was in between assembly here. I had a couple calls from my dad on FaceTime and I was just looking at myself in the screen. My eyes are super droopy. I'm sorry that I'm just a little under the weather. Um, hopefully, hopefully you're not running for the hills. Okay, so now on this piece here, we do have some markers, okay? So when we glue this down, it may be helpful to know what's what. Um, what you'll notice here is there are two little L-shaped ones, and that's going to be for the house, okay? So the house is going to go right there. There's also two more L-shaped ones here. That's for this little guy that we're going to build in a second. That's going to hold our tea light in place. It's going to keep it from bouncing around, okay? Um, so the reason I'm pointing that out is because you might want to look at this little, this little contraption here and see which side, I think I'm gonna go with this side here to be the front, which means that this is gonna go here because the, the house is gonna go here like that, okay? And I think, yeah, that's fine. It doesn't really matter which direction you put it in. It's just more of a personal preference. So however you want to put that in is Totally up to you. I'm gonna put it in like this. Okay, so there we go. We've got the, the continuity, the continuation of our beautiful glitter on our surface, like freshly fallen snow. There we go. Okay, so from that angle, you can see how nice that looks. Okay, and then, so since this is our front, we have a little walkway here, and I'm just going to hit this with a little bit of blue just to kind of create some separation. Just so it pops a little bit. And this is supposed to be it's like an unshoveled little pathway full of snow. Okay, and you can see that's going to go right in the corner like that. I want that right up to the very edge of those vertical walls. Press that down. I'm going to fold these in just to make sure they're sitting nice and upright. Okay. We do have some dimensional trees that we need to assemble and we're almost done with this whole thing here. Now this little guy here, um, this is going to go together pretty much just like the little snow drift container that we just put together. I'm going to just hit this with my little bone folder just to 
make sure that it folds nicely for me. And we're just going to put glue on each of the little tabs and join them with the neighboring walls. Press and hold. And again, this is the little container for our tea light. Just, all you need is just a little standard tea light for this. One of those little guys, nothing crazy. Not those electronic ones that come with the remote. I mean, some of those little ones have that, but this is just the simple little guy that you can probably get like six or seven for a few bucks or a pack of 10, however many they come in. Okay, just keep holding that in place. Bring that next tab in, apply some glue. Make sure you fold this last one in. I'm actually just gonna put glue on it so that I can just kind of do both at the same time. Hold that one in place. And there's our little container. And you'll notice here that there are these two little markers towards the very edge and then just inside there are two more to help with the positioning of this little piece. Okay, so now this is glitter on glitter. My arch nemesis. So don't be afraid to go a little bit heavier with the glue here to really help that bind and bond and just pop that right in between those little markers press down on the inside and you can see how it just does not want to just doesn't grab it will eventually dry but it just doesn't grab i'd grab a dowel and just press down along the perimeter just to make sure as much of that surface is making contact as possible and let that set okay you can see the house is going to go right over that, like that. And you can see how it also kind of keeps it from moving, okay? The little Velcro dots that we put on here will keep it from, you know, falling completely out of place in case you turn it upside down or tilt it too much. Um, now we also have these little additional snow drifts. And you'll notice that we have some little markers over here. And actually, these are the, the shorter sides are the sides that are going to be standing up. The taller sides are the sides that are going to be glued down. Okay, and you just want to find those little markers and just position that right inside of those little markers. Okay, and I'm just going to hit this with a little bit of this turquoise color just right along the edge. And that's gonna get glued down there. We're also gonna put a little tree on there. Let's throw a little bit of glue on that surface. And just use those little markers as a guide. Okay. In which case, I will probably just to blend this even better, I'll hit this with that same blue. Just add a nice frosty little touch to this wintry scene. That looks nice. Got one more here. And that's just going to go right over here. OK. 
Okay, so when you're kind of looking at it from this angle, you can see those little drifts. Okay, next, um, really there's only a few things left to do here. Um, let's just get these little strips in place first and foremost. Now each side of the box, you can see that there's a series of little score marks there. And that's just to help you with the positioning of this, just to make sure it's nice and centered. So go ahead and apply your glue to each of these, just so that the whole box looks like it's been wrapped with a nice bow on all four sides, all the way down the entire surface of the box. Once you get it in place, you can put it down on your surface and just press that down to really get all of it to make good contact with the structure. There we go. And don't forget to use those little score marks to help you with the positioning to get it nice and centered. I'm overusing the word nice today. I need to stop that. Okay. Whoops. Well, at least I'm not overusing the word whoops. Okay, so a couple more to go. A uh, quick little Peyton update. Peyton is now pretty much walking already. Uh, and as I mentioned on Facebook in the group, he's using a fork. He just, he wants to be a big boy and he eats with a fork. So, yeah, I really think that, and I don't know, this is my first, I mean, I've been, ra I raised... And I have been, I'm currently raising two kids um, that I started raising when they were four and five. So I never really had the baby stage. Um, but, so I really can't compare, but I Googled it and it said that kids typically start using forks and utensils by month 18. And Peyton's only uh, not even 13 months. so. He's got really good dexterity with his hands, and I think that's really cool. Okay, so those are all in place. Let's take a look and see how that looks. See how it all lines up. Lines up nicely. There we go. Okay. All right, so this little guy's going to get glued to the inside here, like so. Okay, and I think the best thing to do here is we're gonna to try to pretty much push this back as far as it'll go. Uh, and speaking of that, maybe we... Maybe we even hit the inside a little bit with some of this blue. Why not? Make it a little more interesting. Okay. All right, and don't forget that this, where this little walkway is is gonna be the front, and that's where the house is gonna be facing this way. So I think pretty much right about there is good. I'm gonna almost push it to the back corner as far as it'll go. And then we just have some 3D trees to build to kind of finish off the scene. Okay, so just kind of push it up against the back as far as it'll go, and then press it down. And then you could probably grab a dowel to help you get that to make real good contact with the surface. There we go. You could even fill this with a little bit of like fake snow if you wanted to. I'm just afraid that it'll kind of shoot all over the place if you do that, so maybe it's not a great idea. But, I mean, it's not a bad idea. Okay, there we go, that looks great. Now again, I'm gluing glitter down to cardstock, so you wanna be patient. Make sure that all sets nicely. Um, let's take a look at the trees here. We have some dimensional trees. There's a total of four of them and each one has three sides. Okay, there's one large one. 
So let's just kind of lay these out by size. And let's see here. That little guy. Okay, so there's three there, three there. So one large one, one small one, two that are pretty much the same size. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of glue these. You want to fold them so that your pattern, or if you're using glitter, uh, is inside of a valley, not a mountain. Okay, so the, the valley is down here, and your pattern is actually on this surface here. Okay, this would be a mountain. This is a valley, so you're doing a valley fold on all of these. And what we're going to do, very simply, is apply glue to just one half of each of these trees. Okay, then we're going to take the other, another piece and just match that up. You can actually flatten it out like this if you, if you need to, or halfway flatten it out just to make it easier to connect the two sections together. Make sure you line them up as accurately as possible. Use your surface if it, if it helps. There we go. Okay, so you see what that looks like. Looks really cool. We were going to do four, but four sides, but I don't think it's really necessary. Okay, so then once you have two in place, you can take this last one. It will probably help to flatten it out. And that one's going to go on here like that. And then you have a three, it's like a tripod, basically. Apply your glue to the back side of both of these sections, both sides. And grab this piece, maybe match it up with one side first. Just to make sure it's aligned accurately. And this process is the same for all four of these trees. So it's going to be exactly the same. And then match it up with the other half. Just like that. And there's your little tree. Okay, so I would probably use a little bit of hot glue to anchor these into place. Okay, so there's one. And you're just going to repeat that same process. Now, obviously, you want what we're going to do here. Uh, if you take a look at the prototype, I don't, I probably don't need to show you this, but um, the tallest tree we have back here, and then there's um, one of the medium ones right next to it, just behind there, so you can still kind of see it. And then the shortest one, and then one of the other medium ones on either side. You can put it wherever you want. We have them right behind the little snow drifts. And just hot glue those down. And also don't forget to take off, if you're using the Velcro, take off the backing on the other half of the Velcro dot. and apply that to your surface just to make sure that this thing stays put. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Don't forget to make your three final trees here. I took the backings off of my little, uh, uh, what's it called? Velcros. I'm gonna pop my house into place. Press that down, give it a second, and then if you listen, now it's going on to glitter, so you might have to kind of give it an extra little wiggle for it to stick. Okay. And it's very possible I might actually have to put a little dot of hot glue on that bottom layer. But you can see what the, what the scene looks like in the end. Uh, of course, the battery on my tea light is all but burnt out. But you can see that that fits in there perfectly. And then you put your little house on it. You can close this up. Put your lid on. And when your recipient receives their little gift, it opens up. Well, let's do it this way. 
and they've got their gift card and their little notes. There you go, and bam, super cute. Again, don't forget uh, to make the rest of your trees. Take a look at the final photo so you can see how I positioned mine, and that's gonna do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment, visit us on our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We are now 59,000 strong. Looking forward to that 60,000 and then eventually 100,000. That would be awesome. Um, and if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I'd love to see it and so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Official. That's where you'll find myself and I think it's 46,000 other dreamers that inspire us daily. So thank you again for hanging out with me and as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos and please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where you'll find over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly tutorials. I'll see you in the craft room.